the 50th anniversary of Apollo. And I believe that the next 50 years will be a lot more important than the 50 years from now, from the 50 years ago to today. And I believe they will be important because of you and colleagues like you all over the world who will create that future. So what I want to do in the 12 minutes that I have is I want to talk to you about what it takes to achieve such heights, what it takes to achieve such visions. And I want to do that by starting out with a quote by Nelson Mandela who says, action without vision is only passing time. Vision without action is merely daydreaming, but vision with action can change the world. There's many ways of changing the world. I hope you change the world by doing the amazing missions that I will talk to you about. We talk about three words in there, vision, action, and change, transformation, something that happens as a result of our work that not only increases what we know and can do, but it increases, it changes how we think. That's what we do in science. We change how we think as humanity. And the world going forward is different than the world that was there before. So what does it take to, to add vision and action together for that transformation? I want to talk about a few lessons I using some of the missions that I'm privileged to work on uh, in this job. Before I do so, I want to show you a little model. Uh, if you follow a little particle in the turbulent fluid and you say, how far does that particle get? You see that for many time instances, that particle is kind of bobbing around in a small eddy. It's trying really hard to move off. And all of a sudden, it takes a leap. Now, the untrained eye says what's really important here is the leap, because the distance, of course, has to do a lot more with the leaps than with these little bobbing. What I'm going to talk to you about is no. In your career, it's really important to bob around. It's really important to get those little steps right, because during those little steps, as you learn them, during that action, you'll gain the knowledge to take that leap when the opportunity comes, like for that particle. So imagine that in front of your inner eye as I'm talking through this. The first mission that I'm going to talk to you about is Parker Solar Pro. The mission, the first ever mission, not only in NASA, but anywhere, to be named after a person alive. Eugene Parker in the middle there, in front of the launch vehicle that carried his name and his mission on top of it, was 91 years old where he stood there. Persistence is a really important part of that action part that makes vision a transformation. Parker, when he was 20 plus years old, just after his PhD, wrote a paper that was utterly rejected by re reviewers anywhere, and only because of a friend next door to him. In fact, he was fired even from the job that he was in. And only because of the person that he moved into next to him uh, was the paper finally accepted. The paper had predicted that if the sun is as hot as it is at the surface and the observations of comets that were basically showing that the tails always move away from the sun, that implied, he said, that there's a gas that's streaming from the sun and filling space in a transonic way. So it goes from sup subsonic to supersonic uh, speeds and that fills the whole space called the solar wind. He predicted that was shot down. Of course, the reason we're talking about it the reason his name is on there is he was right. He persisted. Many people shot at him. He persisted, not because he didn't listen to these criticisms, because he tested the criticisms and he proved them wrong. That's what it takes for transformation, persistence. I want to talk about Betsy. See the head there at the front? Without Betsy, the lead of the thermal system at, uh, of the Parker Solar Probe, there would be no Parker Solar Probe in space right now and working. This morning I got the message that the second periapsis pass, uh, the data collected of that uh, second periapsis pass was downloaded correctly today. Uh, the full set is down. Why is that? It's because of that thermal protection shield that is there. It's very, very light, uh, uh, highly advanced technology. And make no mistake, it create, has excellence of engineering, modeling, and manufacturing together, led by her. Without her, there is no transformation of knowledge of the, that we're getting from the Parker Solar Probe, as little as there is 
with Gene Parker. So do not disrespect in any fashion when you're in your work. Do not disrespect, disrespect the tremendous excellence that comes from being best at something and employing that in a mission that we're, that we're uh, building. So it's about persistence. It's about the excellence in a given field, about the ability of going down into the ditch and being best at it and actually uh, doing that uh, at the best level of your ability and the best ability for your team. This is an image of ISAT uh, 2. In fact, the first image uh, taken together from three weeks of observations. Together, the ice data that here is the altitude uh, uh, with a resolution of a little bit under a yard in a lateral uh, dimension, something like three millimeters in altitude uh, resolution, in every way surpasses what was measured before in only three weeks. What you should remember is that that mission that is utterly successful and more and more insights are coming, not just from the ice shields, but com coming from elsewhere, is a mission that almost didn't fly. In fact, the technologies that were, was at its heart failed in test, and the entire mission was over by 30 plus percent in cost. We don't like that the mission was over in cost. We try our best, but every once in a while it's going to happen. This team came together as a result of these failures of that laser, eight lasers that are shooting from the, from the sky something thousands of times per second, those lasers that had failed in test, those, uh, that team came together and revamped that mission and turned it to success. If you're gonna wanna create transformation, you have to be able to bounce back from failures because everybody who's in the business of transformation is doing things that have never been done as such, you will make mistakes. It's not a matter of whether, it's a matter of when you'll make the first mistake. The best teams, the ones that will transform, our understanding are the ones that are bouncing back, like that I said to team, and I'm really proud of them. James Webb is the hardest mission that we've ever done in all of science. Uh, it's right now in integration and test, and uh, in fact, it's going through thermal vacuum of the bus. We, last year, uh, as a result of a number of analysis, I basically had the feeling that we're not going to come in on cost, and I put in an independent review board in place, and we learned from that that the mission actually will cost us close to $800 million more. Trust me, that's not the news you want to carry to Capitol Hill or to the science community or anybody. Why did that occur? Out of the $800 million of extra cost, 600 of those were happening because of three little mistakes. One of them was powering an engine the wrong way. Somebody attached a cable. The process said the second person needs to check whether the cable was attached well. The second person asked, did you attach it well? The first guy said, yes, okay, power on. It was not attached well. The second one was because of flushing engines with the wrong solvent. If we had found it even after it happened, if somebody said, wait, I need to check with the supplier whether that was right, it would have been tens of millions of damage, not hundreds of millions of damage. And the third one is because adapting fasteners without recognizing that the adaptation did not lead to the locking feature of a fastener locking up. So tiny little mistakes by technicians. Many of you will be engineers or masters or PhDs, many degrees. The only way you will be successful of achieving transformation if your technicians believe in your project the same way you do. There's a moment of humility you will have. I remember when I was a PhD standing at Christmas Eve next to my mechanical technician and the only thing I could do is bring him food because he was between me and success, between our entire team and success of a mission that went to Mercury because he needed to work during Christmas because I had failed in planning right and he was bailing us out. I could not do the work. He had to do the work. If you want to be successful, not only do you have to bring excellence to the table yourself, you have to build a team that all the way down through the organization brings excellence to the table. And that's a really hard lesson to learn. This is my hard lesson from my job here. Really important. I want to talk about one more, and it's the value of a diverse team. Landing on Mars, as you know, is really hard. 
Every time you sit there, and if you look, I'm there in the back uh, next to the person standing, um, and uh, I, what you should know about me there is I have prepared two speeches. Uh, one speech is very nice. It only takes something like 20 pages to prepare that speech with all the information. Uh, the other uh, speech has more than 100 pages, which is all the contingencies, the things I need to say if things go badly. I know when I'm sitting there that over 50 percent of all the missions that ever have attempted to land on Mars have not done so successfully. So every time we go there, you know that the only way you're going to be able to do this is the entire team is coming together. So why was I as calm as I was? You're going to see it in the movie. I was not that calm. But I could sleep uh, the night before. Why? Somebody had a really good idea and he invited me into a team meeting of the group of people that are around. I was in a room not saying a word except thank you at the very end. I was in a room and basically learned how a team there at JPL together with their industrial uh, partners at Lockheed Martin and others are basically looking at data and are fixing things. We had to in fact change the orbit from that last meeting because we're coming in long. We had problems with both of the small sats, the cube sats that were there to pipe the data back, but we had the best team working at it, pushing each other. Uh, one of them had been in every single landing. One of them I knew because she sit, uh, sat in my classroom before and they were pushing each other. And what happens when a diverse team comes together that pushes each other doing amazing things feels a little bit like this. I don't know if you have any sound. What we're hearing is major milestones being achieved, like the uh, parachute is coming out. This is Andy, the CubeSat guy, was in my class too. Altitude 400 meters, 200 meters, 80 meters, 60 meters, 30 meters, 20 meters, 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Many people only think of that image. I think of the team doing the hard work before that. I think of the people being, having the humility of learning from each other. I think of the people who uh, were experts, the best at their fields, coming together as one. That's what achieves transformation. So I look forward to seeing what you will do. Thank you so much. Thank you.